Hello again! In this video, we will take the lion's head that we textured in Painter and try to put it under the best light possible in Stager. This is perhaps one of the most important steps and you shouldn't rush it, even if you're tired of your project and you want to move on to something else. A beautiful asset will always look bad if the lighting and composition are off, so take your time to polish your scene. Your renders should highlight your texturing work but also add depth and meaning to your asset. We'll cover two different types of setup and lighting for this project, so that you can see a broad spectrum of what you can achieve in Stager. All right, let's begin. So we are now in Substance Stager. The interface is very simple, with the viewport in the middle, the assets panel on the left, and the scene and properties panels on the right. If you're not familiar with Stager, we have an intro series for you. Our model is right here in the scene hierarchy with all its components. In the last video, we used the send to function to send our mesh and textures from painter to stager, so we don't have anything to do on that end. All we need to do is place our model as we want it. One cool feature of stager is the collision function. By enabling it at the group level, we can make the whole model collide with the ground and thus have a more realistic placement. This really saves some time, as you don't have to fiddle with the gizmo. We're going to begin with a very simple composition that highlights the model nicely without being too distracting. Let's put our sword guard upright first. Next up, I'd like to make the background darker so that the gold stands out more. We can do it by going to the environment properties and change the background color there. Like so. We can also hide the grid if it gets in the way. This gives us a solid dark background with subtle ground shadows. Another way of doing this would be to put our model in some kind of open box. Let me show you the trick real quick. Simply bring a cube in your scene, scale it up. Now the key here is to convert it to a standard mesh by clicking here, since by default stager primitives are all parametric objects. Once it's converted, you can use the magic wand to select only one face. Then simply delete it and apply some kind of matte material to the box. What I like with that setup is that it blocks some of the light from the environment. Let me switch to ray traced mode to show you. See? It's giving a much more contrasted and dramatic feel to the scene. And by playing with the rotation of the light, you can achieve very interesting results. At this point, it's a good idea to start adding cameras to the scene, to save interesting angles. Of course, Stager lets you change the focal length of your cameras, as well as the resolution if you want to. I'm gonna leave it as is. What I'd like to change, though, is the environment light that's currently applied. I think something a bit more contrasted would work best. Like this, for example. And yes, perfect. See how the light hits the side of the face and enhances the volumes. If you want to have more granular control over the lighting, you can add physical lights to your scene. You'll find them at the top of the lights panel. I'm going to grab an aerial light, rotate it downwards, and scale it up to match the model. All right, next we need to increase its intensity. Toggle the gizmo to world space mode by pressing T to move it easily. Now let's go back into camera view just to check how things look. All right. Now we can turn down the environment light. And you see that if I turn it off completely, the area lights takes over the scene and creates that very dramatic look, which I find very cool. So that was one way of staging our model. Now let me quickly show you another approach. Let's say we want to make something more atmospheric and evocative. I'm going to start by adding a plane for the sword guard to rest on. Scale it up. All right. And then what I have in mind here is to turn this into some kind of parquet floor. So we need a wood material for this. If we take a look at the materials panel, we see that we have a couple of wood materials by default but they are very light and clean and wouldn't work very well with our model. 
Again, we need something a bit dark to make the gold stand out. So let's browse the Substance 3D Assets library by clicking on the plus button over here. Then search for dark wood and see what we get. All right. I think these two could work. If we click on one of them, we can see its properties, see if it's scanned or procedural, for example, and also send it directly to Stager. There it is. As you can see, it looks way better than the default oak material. Now we need to make a few changes to it. I'm going to increase the resolution to 4K because we want all the crisp details in, in case we make some close-ups. Then rotate the wood veins so that they follow the line of the sword. And lastly, increase the tiling. This is looking pretty good already, so let's add a camera to frame nicely what we just did. OK. It's time to tackle the lighting, so we need to switch to ray traced mode once more. And then go back to the lights panel to search for something fitting. I imagine the light pouring from a window or a door, so let's experiment with a few outdoor lights. Maybe too sharp? I don't know, we'll decide later. Panorama map is softer but also more dull. The angle of the light is nice though, this is kind of what I'm looking for. As you can see, I'm just trying out a bunch of environment lights. I actually like the urban exploring one a lot. It's contrasted yet quite neutral, so I'm going to go with this one. Keeping that nice diagonal angle again, it works well with our composition. Also, remember that you can lock cameras that you like to avoid changing them by accident. Overall, this is looking pretty good. Now we need to bring a few props in to add some context and storytelling to our renders. And by that, I mainly mean shadows. Let's add a plane to our scene to block some of the light and focus it on our model. You see that by doing so, we are framing the lion's head and guiding the eye towards it. That's one very simple setup that works perfectly on its own in my opinion. But we can flesh it out a bit more if we want by making the shadows more complex. Let's look for a nice foliage mesh in our assets panel. Foliage B should work nicely in the scene. Now, if we go in the object properties, you'll notice that it comes with a lot of options. And that's because it's a parametric asset. You can spot them by the little sliders icon in the corner here. We can, for example, change the type of leaf, the distribution of the leaves, and much more. Now let's place it so that it casts nice shadows onto a model. Reactivate ray tracing. And you can see here we have a problem. Our environment light is too soft, and so the effect is barely visible. So let's try a stronger light, such as Villanova. Perfect. All we have to do is a bit of tweaking to get the desired effect. The other way the object, the softer the shadows. And nice, this works well. Now there's another way of achieving that effect that doesn't require a complex mesh. That technique comes from photography and consists in using a prop called a gobo. Basically, any plane with a cutout pattern that will cast shadows when hit by a light source. All we need for that is a plane, and then in the materials properties, search for the opacity slot. Here we can load any black and white image, meaning white will block light while black will let it pass. I have a nice foliage silhouette here that should work perfectly. Hmm. What's happening here is that since all these planes are duplicates, their materials are linked. This is useful in lots of cases, but for us it's best if I just undo that and break that link by clicking on Unlink here. Now I can add my mask back, and it will apply only to that one plane. Now there's another issue here. The values are inverted, and what should be transparent is opaque. So to fix this, we can click the Edit button here, and Stager will automatically open the image in Photoshop. Here, all we have to do is invert the levels and save. 
Thanks to the live link between Stager and Photoshop, the problem is now fixed and we can start adjusting the position of the plane to get something more interesting. Bringing it closer to see more clearly the leaf shapes. Nice. Each time you think something looks beautiful, just create a camera to capture that. I'm actually going to create a bunch of them, playing on the angles, changing the ratio to have something more balanced. All right. I'm also going to make a shot with some depth of field. And keep adjusting. Now that we have nice camera views, it's time to think about rendering them. Let's hop into the Render workspace by clicking on the Render tab here. Now a few words about this window. The render settings are on the left hand side. Most important is the GPU option. Make sure it's enabled if you have a supported GPU as it will make your render much faster. Stager also lets you choose between presets, so you don't have to manually set each parameter. High and Ultra are overkill for most use cases, so we can just keep things at medium and leave the rest untouched. If you want to make quick preview renders, you can decide to render at half the resolution just to check how things look. On the right, you'll find all your cameras. Just check the one you want to render. You can also override their resolution if you want. For the format, you can interestingly choose to render in Photoshop format. This will give you layers based on the materials and objects in your scene, which can be very useful for post-process. And that's it. Simply press render and enjoy reaping the results of your hard work. I hope you enjoyed this short series and that it inspired you to experiment the full substance workflow and have fun with it. I also hope it made you look at historical artifacts with a fresh eye full of love and curiosity. There's so much beauty out there, we can't wait to see what you create with it.